let's talk about something that I think is very interesting. <clears throat> and it's actually a little controversial. That is gifting. I'm going to go over pretty much the entire process that I went through over the past like two years on gifting. Now, before I even get started, there are several people who get extremely bent out of shape when you bring up um, gifting food items to Sasquatch. First of all, let me first say that um, if you think these creatures are around your property and you live out in wilderness areas, um, you don't want to leave food items out because, number one, you don't want to bring in other animals, okay? But just like you, I am a grown adult, so I make my own decisions. I knew what I was getting into. For years, I had heard that uh, it's very dangerous to actually feed Sasquatch because if you stop, they will then become belligerent and or aggressive. And there are a couple stories floating around out there about that. And I followed that rule for probably about four years. But then I started noticing a repeating pattern in Sasquatch research. And that is the fact that a lot of these rules that are supposed to be like gospel and that are repeated over and over again weren't panning out to be true. I had experienced other claims that, like, Sasquatch, Sasquatch won't come around if you have guns or flashlights. Well, that has not been what I've experienced over the years. Uh, there's good information out there. There's bad information out there. And then you also have to consider that these are individual creatures. I don't think they're all going to react the same way, even in the same circumstances. So with that in mind, what caused me to actually start gifting. And I listened for years. For years, I wouldn't gift because I was afraid of a negative outcome. But two things happened at once. I got chickens, and then they were laying eggs. And all of a sudden, one month, the eggs were just disappearing. They were either weren't laying or something was getting them. We didn't know what it was. Um, so I figured, you know what? Maybe maybe it is the Sasquatch getting the eggs. I don't know if it is or not. But just in case, I'll start leaving them out further away from the chicken coop. Kind of like, hey, um, you don't have to get them. I will give you a few of them to kind of keep them, you know, from messing around with the chickens if it even was them. I didn't know. And that, and I realized something. When people say that you don't need to gift because if you quit gifting, you will get an aggressive, violent behavior or reaction, that's not all I'm hearing. I'm hearing something very specific and it puts it in its own category, that claim does. There is a reason why there's hundreds of us running around in the woods trying to prove these things exist. That is because we don't know how to figure out where they're going to be, when they're going to be there, and what they are going to do. But with this specific claim, you are saying that you know all of that. In fact, if that is true, this would be the best way to prove that these creatures exist in general. Because what you're saying is they're going to react violently. A, a violent or aggressive reaction would be the easiest and best video to capture. Um, basically, the holy grail of Sasquatch activity recorded on video. Because violent or aggressive behavior should be super obvious. And what I was seeing was two different categories. Um, there were people that were claiming that with no video evidence to back it up. And then there were people that had been gifting for a very long period of time and were getting good results or no results at all. So as a Sasquatch researcher, quote unquote, I want to be able to prove things. I wanna be able to prove these things exist. So I try to base what I think off of evidence. And there has been a lack of evidence to back up the fact that they react aggressively. Now you could say, oh, well, 
the people that had this happen, they, they're not interested in proving Sasquatch is real or they weren't ready to get it on, on video. I understand that happens, but there are a bunch of people out there doing this that are not getting that reaction that are ready. What are the odds that the ones that are documenting this whole process with video evidence are the ones not getting violent reactions? So I said, you know what? I want to know if this is real or not. And I am willing to take the chance. Now, a lot of people, um, you know, everybody's got an opinion, but this one seems to be a very strong one. In fact, you people will belittle people, um, talk down to them, call them crazy or stupid because you're going to get hurt, blah, blah, blah. You don't know what you're doing. Maybe that's the case. But uh, I have decided to dedicate my time, money, and effort into trying to prove these things exist. I'm willing to take that chance. And from what you're about to see, it has turned out um, to be a very positive experience for me, actually. In fact, I think it's taken my research from being very slow, getting very, very slow results to within the last couple years, uh, the activity and the interactions and the results have amped up. Now, it may just be a matter of eventually I cross the imaginary line where they trust me, or I believe possibly they might may not even be eating or taking the gifts, which most of the times eggs, sometimes it was corn, sometimes vegetables. They may not even be taking that stuff, but maybe they're smart enough to understand the concept that, hey, this is from me to you. That's what I was looking for. Now, I don't leave video or try to trap the food items that I leave out. Uh, number one, if you want a Sasquatch to stay away from an area, that's what you do. You put a camera on it, from what I've seen over the years. But from beginning to end, I want to go over exactly what happened over the past couple of years when I first decided to start gifting. When I first made the decision to start gifting, I started in two different places. <clears throat> That's my house, chicken coop, what I consider their hill, and this will come into play in a little bit. I consider this kind of my hill or my sitting area. The first thing I did was start gifting right here. There's a wood line or a small thing of woods. all right there and then it opens up here and then it gets more wooded as you get past all the i mean it's dotted with trees obviously but it's pretty thick right here but saplings so the first thing i did was build a like a bird nest type thing out of just metal and wire um made a contraption to where if you had a brick tied to it and you shove it down on a tree and it would hang up you pick up the brick and they would come down i put eggs in there and that they were in there for i think a month or two very long time nothing ever touched it but at the same time i was going back here on this hill because i had suspicions that that's pretty much where they're at at night and i started leaving eggs in a couple different places pretty close to each other um eggs on this on a stump right here i eventually put eggs here i put eggs like back over here it's like three or four different places that i was leaving eggs in that particular area now nothing happened with the wire and metal gifting basket but after I started leaving eggs back there on that hill, um, the next thing that happens is I go out there to check the eggs one day. And I pretty much take the same path every time, uh, either this way or like this way. I cross the creek. There's a creek right here. I go up to their hill and right in here, I find half 
of a squirrel. It was like it was just chopped right in half, just laying there on the side of the hill. Um, probably only about not even 10 feet away from where I'd been leaving eggs. Now, that's not super abnormal. Uh, there are bobcats and coyotes out here, but it looked like the squirrel was just cut in half. It was the upper half of the squirrel. Uh, no blood, no guts. And it's just odd that a predator would leave that there. So I didn't even take video of it. Um, it's just like, all right, dead squirrel, no big deal. Well, either the next day or the day after that, I get home from work and my wife says, hey, and while I'm out there looking, I leave eggs again after I find that squirrel. My wife's like, hey, uh, there's a dead squirrel behind the chicken coop. And I go out there and look and there is a dead squirrel just a few feet right behind the chicken coop, just like it just fell asleep right there. Now, a lot of times we can jump to conclusions on things, but that's just so on the nose. What are the odds that I find half a squirrel where I'm leaving eggs the day before and then find a full squirrel right next to the chicken coop? Now, what it meant, I don't know. Maybe they like squirrels or they were giving me a squirrel in return. But here's the videos of the, the first basket and then me finding the squirrel. I just did my little... Kind of artificial bird nest. You got a few little pricklies on it. Maybe if it sits out here long enough, they'll get to trust it. Back here behind the house again, and uh, I'm gonna look at my look for my missing log, and there's a dead squirrel right behind the chicken coop. The next really cool thing that happened back there, um, on the same hill, I was walking in this area right here on the other side. This is a creek. On the other side of the creek, and I'm walking this direction, and as I'm recording over there on their hill, I see a limb get pulled down. And then right after I see it, I say something, I'm, I talk about it on video, and I go to point to it, and then another one gets pulled down. Uh, I've been over the video over and over again. It's not a squirrel or a raccoon or anything else. There's what that's what's odd for as much um, activity as there is as much uh, as big of a section of this limb that goes down. You would think you'd be able to see what is doing. The only thing I've been able to find is a uh, section of the video where it looks like an arm comes up and grabs it and pulls it down. Now, it's too far away and the video is not good enough to identify anything 100%. But that definitely made me focus more on that hill. Um, and then shortly after that, I was going up there to either leave eggs or check on eggs or something. And I take the same hill every time. I cross the creek, I go up the hill, take the same trail. And I walk by this particular stump to get back to where I leave eggs, either here, here, and then here. Well, I walk up and on top of that stump is a Native American skinning rock, uh, 15 feet away from previous days or whatever earlier where the limb pulls had happened. So that was pretty interesting. A lot of times when I come out here and walk around, spend time out here, they see me do it. Dude, what was that? All right, just... now go to the interesting part. I looked and looked and looked, and the only thing that looks suspicious um, at this distance, you're looking at a bunch of pareidolia, really, honestly. The only thing that really looks suspicious is this guy right here, right in the middle, that brown spot. You can't tell what that is, but it happens again. Go to 
four minutes. And right where I point, I am pointing out where this happened at. And then watch what happens again right after I point. A limb went down and went back up again. Like drastically. Right in there, a limb went down and went back up again. Now, while that happens, it definitely looks like there's something back there moving around. You can't tell what it is. Um, to me, it does look like an arm reaches up and grabs it and pulls it down. So you can probably recognize this area um, on my property or back behind my property. Same spot where I had the daytime uh, tree shake. I was walking back here. I've been, been back here in a couple weeks. And I'm walking up. And there's a rock stuck here. Let's go check out the, uh, where I left the eggs. The next interesting thing that happens, I go out one night, <clears throat> and I come to about right here, there's a big log laying down right here. And I set up with my thermal, I've got my GoPro out there, um, it's right before dark, I'm probably out there maybe eight to ten minutes before it gets dark dark nothing happens i got everything set up i got my thermal in my hand i start to look through my thermal this direction and i see what looks like i think it's a bird it's moving so fast and straight that i think it's just a bird and i'm looking i'm looking but then when it gets to about right here it stops at a, at a tree and turn around and looks at me turns back around and then keeps going um i call it the monkey face fur missile because that's what it looks like when it stops at that tree and turns and looks it looks like it's got a monkey face if i had to guess if that's what it is the video is not good enough to prove that it is a sasquatch but if it is one i believe it's a juvenile and i think what happened is i got out there he was over here in his little area hanging out and as soon as it got dark enough, it took off. And that's what it looks like to me in the video. So that's another pretty uh, pretty cool thing that's happened in this one particular area. That's why I call that their hill.
I was basically doing two different types of gifting. One was right behind the house, a big pile of corn with a bunch of eggs on top of it. I made a hanging basket with eggs in it. Um, I put eggs inside of mason jars to try to see if they would, you know, try to get those open. And then I would just straight up give them stuff back there, make it easy on them up there at their spot. And really, um, with the stuff right behind my house, I probably did exactly what you were told not to do, which is leave a bunch of stuff and then just quit. I did that numerous times. Uh, for a couple of weeks, I would leave food out there and then I would just stop. And then sometimes I'd leave five or six eggs and then stop. I may do it for a week. I may do it for a day. There was no pattern. I did it when I thought about it. Um, I haven't put corn out in a very long time. But eventually, what wound up happening um, is I think whether they were taking it or not, I think they could comprehend the fact that it was left for them, I think, is what was going on. So one of these nights that I went back to their hill and I went and checked the, I left vegetables and the eggs inside of a Tupperware to see if they would mess with it, see if they would open it. And they did not. But I went and I checked it and I left and I'm walking down and I get to the creek and right before I go to cross the creek, I hear something behind me. Sounds like a knock or a break. So I go up and I sit in this opening right here on this log and I do a wood knock. Well, that's the night that changed everything for me. Uh, a few minutes later, I get a throw, a break. Um, over the next couple months, probably about seven or eight months, I think there's been five times now to where I can go out there, sit in that spot, do a wood knock, and then six or eight minutes later, they will come out and they will start throwing things. They will do rock clacks. They will break stuff. The second night, which I'll show you, um, I actually had them run up really close behind me. So, and to even, to establish that type of pattern, to be able to go out there, do a wood knock, and then have them come out and like perform, that's something that I never ex expected to get to. And I honestly believe that all the things that happened back there on that hill, along with the gifting, is what pushed me over the edge, or what pushed them to the point to where maybe they could finally trust me. Um, it, we're getting very close to the time of year that this happened last year. It was 2024. Now, 2023 is when all that stuff started to happen, where I had several nights where they would come up there and, like, play games. So, honestly, I think the gifting, um, it worked for me, you know. But I wanted to show a few things and give out a couple calls give people props. Um, you guys have been coming up with some really good ideas, um, asking really good questions. First and foremost, uh, who was it? Uh, Papa Pump, you asked about mason jars. Hold up. On their hill. And I'm leaving the goodies here with a stick. All right, I'm just gonna sit here and hang out.
chills. No way. laughing. Come on, folks. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. something moving behind me and then something hit over to my right. Oh, there's definitely movement. Alright, I'm not going to turn around. This is the about the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. 